Doom is a old game, like 30 years old. <laughs> Despite that, the original two Doom games are still some of my favorite games of all time. The satisfying weapons, the fantastic level design, the amazing enemy design, all of these things come together to create games that I've been enjoying since I was 5 years old. Like a true Doom fan. But you know what was the other game that I enjoyed when I was 5 years old? Minecraft! <laughs> And you see, a funny little quirk about this game, Minecraft, is that you can build a house. <laughs> Minecraft quickly became my most played game on the Xbox 360, with most of that time spent in creative mode, building whatever my little heart desired. But in more recent years, that desire of building stuff has manifested into creating maps for games I like. Which leads us back to Doom. You see, ever since Doom released back in 1993, custom map packs have become a core part of the classic Doom experience. And over the last couple of decades, the tools to make those maps have become far more efficient and easier to learn, to where Doom is probably one of the easiest games to map for now. And I'm hoping to show you that. So let's get started. But before we do that, there's two things I need to tell you. One, the most widely used map editor for Doom is Doom Builder, but there is also multiple kinds of Doom Builder out there, and the one I personally use and I will be using for this video is Ultimate Doom Builder, which means things will either be different or just straight up not there in different versions of Doom Builder, so keep that in mind. And two, I am covering this from the perspective of making maps for GZ Doom, which is a source port that removes a lot of the technical limitations of the original Doom games, and generally makes modding the game a lot easier. So keep these things in mind moving forward. After opening the program up and configuring the settings, we are presented with a blank canvas, ready to be drawn on. What we just made here is called a sector. Each sector has a bunch of different values stored in it, like the sector's brightness, the height and texture of the ceiling and floor, and the textures of the walls among other things. Hi. And with this comes one of the biggest limitations when it comes to Doom mapping. You can't have a room over another room. That is just how Doom works in its weird semi-3D engine. Also, if you just learned Doom is not a true 3D game just now, well, I have some unfortunate news to tell you. Santa Claus died in 2015. So yeah, this limitation is not the end of the world, but it's definitely something to keep in mind while mapping. So let's make some more sectors. There we go. We are definitely reaching peak level design here. You may notice now that some of the lines are now grayed out. Now the important thing about this line is, it can do some funny stuff. Like this. <laughs> Specials are probably one of the most important parts about any Doom level. There are two kinds of specials, Sector and Line Specials. Sector Specials are very simple. You just right-click on the Sector and open up the Specials menu, to where there's a handful of Specials to select from. Line Specials, on the other hand, are for stuff like doors, lifts, teleporters, and others. When selecting a Line Special, there will be two characters defining on how this Line Special is activated, like for example, WR which means to activate it, you have to walk over it, and it can be done multiple times. And there is also S1, which means you have to activate it like a switch, and it can only be done once. And there is also D and G activation types. D activation types pretty much just mean, this is a door. While G activation types mean you have to shoot it with a hitscan weapon, like a pistol, the chain gun, or any of the shotguns. All of these appear at the bottom of the selection menu, just in case you need to be reminded. So now with all this in mind, let's make a switch activated door, which is very easy to make. Right click on the wall and give it the activation type you want. Make sure the little nub on the line is facing towards where the player is going to activate it from. Then the door. Now you could make it from scratch, or you could just hit this button that automates making a door for you. Which, why wouldn't you? Now simply click on both the switch and the door in the 2D view and give them the same tag. And there you go, that's how you make a switch activated door. Interesting uses of specials is important when making a Doom level, so feel free to experiment and figure out what works and what doesn't, and what definitely doesn't. So with all of that out of the way, let's finally play our level. Oh yeah, I'm stupid. Hold on, let me just... 
Okay, now we can play. I feel like this map needs something. I've got it! Game of the year, winner is... Things are pretty much all the 2D sprite objects in the game, like enemies, weapons, power-ups, and even you! And because of that, there isn't too much to do with them in Editor besides a couple of settings that you can configure. First of all, there is the option to configure the direction of the entity. Then there are the settings of Easy, Normal, and Hard, which sounds a little vague, but what it really means is the difficulties that this entity will appear in. Like if you tick off Hard, this entity will no longer appear in Ultraviolence and Nightmare. Same with ticking off easy. Now the entity will no longer appear on I'm Too Young to Die and Hey Not Too Rough. There is also multiplayer only, which is pretty much the same as the difficulty tags, but now this entity will only appear in multiplayer sessions like co-op and deathmatch. And finally, ambush player. With this ticked on any of the enemies, the enemy will gain 360 vision and will only wake up until the player enters their line of sight. And that's pretty much it on the settings. But there is so much more to go over with the individual entities, which is way beyond the scope of this video. So if you're looking for more information on stuff like enemy behaviors and the properties of power-ups, I would highly recommend the videos by Decino. He has a bunch of videos going into Doom's inner workings, which is great to know when getting into mapping. And that's pretty much all you need to know to get started on Doom mapping. But but but, there's one last thing I would like to show you. Isn't he cute? Now I'm gonna try and keep this pretty short, since Slade as a program can do a lot that goes beyond the scope of just making levels. But I would like to quickly show you one of the easiest things you can do with the program, adding in your own custom graphics. Like for example, adding a wall texture. Simply open up the wad containing your maps, Grab the image that you want, drag it into Slade, then right click on the image, then click on both Add the Patch Table and Add the Texture X. That's it. You can now open up Doom Builder and add that texture to your map. I would definitely recommend using the size of the original Doom textures as a reference. You don't really have to though, so really go wild with it. But there is one last important thing to know. If you give your image the same name as a pre-existing asset in Doom, your image will override the original image. And that pretty much goes for every graphic in the game. Like, for example, the Doom Guy face graphics. And what that means is with enough blood, sweat, and tears, and an afternoon to spend, you can make a mistake. Life is pain! I hate my- I'm killing you. I'm killing you. I don't care about anything else. I don't give a shit about anything else. There is no like, oh, he's running? I'll back off a little. Nope, it's just- <laughs> It's horrifying. It's like a nightmare. It's a dream. And that's it. Doom mapping is not that hard to wrap your head around. Despite the original Doom being 30 years old now, they still have a thriving modding community. And with stuff like MyHouse.Wad blowing up earlier this year, and potentially a new Doom game coming in the near future, there isn't a better time to try out Doom mapping. So if any of this has interested you, I will link Ultimate Doom Builder, Slade, and GZ Doom in the description. And if you end up running into any problems during your mapping journey, there's plenty of videos by the wider Doom community to help you out. So get out there and start making your own masterpiece that will make John Romero start sobbing uncontrollably. And if you aren't gonna do that, I at least hope you enjoyed the video. No 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 get- Hello, if you've made it this far into the video, I really appreciate it. I have just gotten done editing the video together, and I am really, really excited about it. Because, uh, it's been a while. A long while. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been a long gap between the last video I made and this one. Mainly because just, I haven't been really able to get a video idea that is stuck like this. 
And now it is finished, and I am so happy about it. I am floored. I will definitely try and get a video out a lot sooner than this one did. I do have some other ideas on videos I can make, so there is that. And I'm also probably going to make more videos like the other video I made, where it's just me playing with my friends, since those are fun to make. And you know, Lethal Company was a game that came out. What? Uh, is... Is... What? I heard him. Oh, am I so Yeah, that was a fun game. I'm definitely making a video on that. Hopefully. And also, I have a funny Twitter account that you can follow, where I do my best to be funny. I also make some art. I consider myself an artiste, you see. Like, look at this, ooh, look at that, ooh, look at this funny creature. You want to follow my Twitter for more, hmm. And I also have a Newgrounds to archive this art, because, uh, Twitter is probably not surviving past 2024. So that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video Pong. as much as I did making it. Pong. Scott the Wasp video! Scott the Wasp video! Holy shit! <laughs>